Guys, up next, we're welcoming on Nick Holt. Hi, Nick. It's good to see you again. Yeah. Hey, Katie. Good to be here. Absolutely. So Nick is calling in from Costa Rica. Um, he is a, a fitness trainer and nutrition coach. He knows a lot about feet, and that is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so Nick, welcome. Give us you know, a little bit more background. That was a brief introduction. Give us some background on you, what you do, and then you know, how the foot is the link between everything else up above it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so important. And it's so sort of under, I think it's becoming more talked about nowadays, thankfully. Uh, but yeah, I mean, my quick background, you know, sports athletics has been a part of my life since I was young. I got played junior sort of national tennis and then got recruited to play college basketball. Uh, had a really bad back injury in high school. And I remember I had, a, went to my sort of doctor at the time. And he said, like, never to lift weights, you know, it's like, don't do any kind of heavy weightlifting. And so I kind of like believe that as as like truth, um, which we'll come back to in a second. And then I sort of went to university, I, I studied finance, I got into the sort of, uh, you know, investment analyst world. And, and in my late 20s, I was 30, 40 pounds overweight, my, my, my body, the athlete inside of me was like dying a slow death. And I really had to I had to do something about it. So I did something pretty drastic. I sold all my stuff. I moved to Costa Rica. Um, <laughs> I started, I had a friend who had a surf camp and and started sort of coaching, teaching, and then started my own, um, you know, personal training business there. And I met my wife and she had a sales background and she helped me grow the business. And, and so, um, yeah, I mean, of, of late, I've really taken a, a, a deep dive into foot health because as a surfer, as something that I'm really passionate about, there's I was really limited because my ankles and my feet were, you know, literally in casts for like 15 years of my life, having my ankles sprained and then taped, and and not really understanding like the the knock on effects all the way up the chain of how that was creating a lot of knee pain and back pain, and so it was really this like you know kind of selfish quest to sort of better my. <laughs> My surfing that led me to find the the Foot Collective, which um, I'm sure we'll talk about a little bit. I think that's how you found me, um, and it's a beautiful community. All you know, taking a really uh, powerful stance and like trying to relook at how we look at foot health and footwear and 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 how the foot impacts you know health and longevity. And so, yeah, I've I've taken a deep dive into that, and and I'm excited to share sort of what I've learned and and how the foot and the toes and everything really impacts everything up, up the chain and how our footwear is really not doing us um, any service in terms of promoting, you know, quality sort of health for our lower bodies. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. So can you give us a little perspective or paint a picture on, you know, the structural aspect of the foot, what's going on in the foot? How is it made up? And I mean, why is it so important? Yeah. So I always start with, you know, 26 bones, 33 joints and four layers of muscle, right? That each, each one, half, that's the anatomy of the foot. So if we think about over a quarter of the bones in our body are in our feet, right? So, and, and joints are made to move, right? So when, if we just come from that sort of first principles approach of like, okay, joints are made to move. We have 33 joints in our feet. And, and what are we doing? We're mostly putting, you know, these big sort of cushiony, sort of mitts on our feet and we're totally taking taking away any of that like sensory information um that the, the foot's essentially designed to do right so i look at the foot as as having two primary roles it's like a, it's a it's a sensor it's a sensor and then it's a stabilizer mm -hmm. so i think the the cool analogy i use is like our eyes are, are probably our most well-known sensor and when we go outside we have a lot of sunlight we we put on sunglasses right so but, but with our feet, it's like we put on these big sort of cushiony mitts and we're, you know, it's like we're putting blindfolds. It, it would be like the equivalent of putting on a blindfold when we go outside for our eyes. We're yeah. putting on blindfolds for our feet and it's not allowing the body to get that sensory information from the ground so that it can predict behavior and, and you know, and help us not, not fall and get through space. And then, you know, with performance, um, for sure, I think I think the better you can feel the ground, the better you can. Um, we can get into this if you want. You know, ex have that big toe extension where you can really propulse uh, the body forward. You need to have like a really strong and, and mobile foot. Right. And so, 
you know, when we look at it from a foundation, the foot is a foundation and a stabilizer. When we wear, especially shoes that have like a, a ramp that have sort of a big heel drop, right? That have like a heel and, and is higher than the, the, the front of the shoe. That kind of, it's like playing that game Jenga, Jenga, right? Where it's like that bottom, that bottom piece is a little bit off kilter. So everything up the chain has to sort of adjust and recalibrate. And, and we've talked about this before, like, I think for specific um, situations, like wearing an Olympic lifting shoe where you have a heel lift can be like sort of an athletic performance edge, right? Because it gives you a little bit more of that ankle dorsiflexion so you can get into a deeper squat so you can probably lift more weight. Um, but if we're talking from like a health and longevity perspective, wearing a shoe that has a ramp or wearing a shoe that's cushiony isn't really going to give the body the feedback that it needs to, 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 you know, um, really excel and, and be healthy and robust and bulletproof. Right. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. So what I'm hearing you say is using, you know, maybe using the shoes, lifting shoes or something like that as a tool, but not yep. as something to rely on in order to be able to perform the movement. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think it's, it goes with like running shoes too. Like, I think you look at the elite runners like um, Kipchoge, right? The guy who, who I think broke the two hour marathon and, and he's wearing a, you know, he's wearing a really cushioned shoe, but that's like his, like, that's his edge. I mean, if we're pushing, pushing the edge of, of athletic human, you know, performance, like we need those tools, but if we're trying to just not, have foot pain and, you know, be, you know, I know there's a lot of military and, and first responders and people who are on their feet a lot. Right. Um, people are, de- I think it's like 85% of people will deal with, with like some kind of foot pain. Mm-hmm. So we have to look at, um, you know, using these sp- sort of specialty tools like shoes, like, you know, occasionally to perform maybe to achieve that, but long-term moving to more of a, a natural shoe, which we can talk about or spending some time barefoot. Mm -hmm. Um, that that's really, really important. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, touching on, you know, going back to what you said about, we, we do have a lot of people here, our first responders, military, you know, who are required to maybe wear heavy foot gear and be in boots a lot of the time. So, you know, with that being said, what is, a good approach to beginning to be proactive with your feet and understand what's going on and take care of them? Yeah. So great question. There's a, there's a lot there to unpack. Yeah. I think with, so the framing or the lens that I like to look at footwear through, and this is from sort of the foot collective, it's, it's looking at the five F's and then we can sort of unpack the the boot and the military gear. Cause I think that's, that that's a that's an additional challenge but the five f's so i think foot shape is the most important so having a sort of a wider toe box Mm -hmm. if you look at most shoes get narrower as you get to the toe box and so that can create a lot of problems so foot shape flat so that's what we talked about a little bit before having not having a a, what's called a heel drop you Mm -hmm. maybe people are familiar with a heel drop um olympic shoe or a stiletto uh, or high heel would be the most extreme example of, of an extreme heel lift. Right. But a, even like a, a normal Nike or Reebok or any Adidas shoe is going to have like a higher heel to, to forefoot. That's the heel drop. So you want to have it more flat, mm-hmm. uh, flexible, right? Those joints are made to move. So flexible feel that's the cushioning. So you want as little cushioning as possible. Uh, that's going to allow you again to feel the ground and then uh, fix. Cause a lot of people ask me about sandals. Mm. And sandals can be problematic because there's a lot of toe gripping. So if you've ever tried to run in sandals, you know, right. it's quite difficult. Right. And so a lot of times what you're doing is you're just gripping the toes. And so if you have a fixed heel, so you'll see a lot of um, sandals. Uh, I have a pair of zeros, zero sandals or earth runners. There's a, there's a bunch of out, out there, but they have more of a fixed heel. Mm -hmm. Um, And so you don't have to grip the toes to propel in the gait cycle. So those are the five Fs, uh, foot shape, flat, flexible, feel, and and fixed. And then with, I think with boots, yeah, I think there are some companies that are actually starting to produce a a more functional, more like natural shoe. Mm -hmm. Um, 
or boot. I think to me, I look at it like more on a spectrum. So if you can find a boot that maybe is, maybe it's stiff and rigid, but it has a wider toe box, maybe that's a win, you know, kind of okay. looking at it like on a spectrum. So, you know, trying to move towards that more sort of natural shoe, what, you know, hitting all those five components and maybe you hit two or five or three or five. Um, but yeah, that, that definitely is a challenge for our, our military and first responders. Cause I don't think it's, it has really been addressed, but I think there are some people doing some, some good work in this area. Yeah. So one thought too, well, I have a couple thoughts, but one, like, as you know, I'm hearing you list out the five F's, you know, and thinking like, okay, you know, foot shape, flat, flexible, you know, and, and thinking the first thought that comes to my mind is that sounds really uncomfortable, you know, going, yeah. going from just to be honest, like going from a shoe, uh, a uh, conventional shoe, you know, something we're used to, would you suggest going straight to something like a more low profile shoe or a zero shoe right away? Or is there, you know, a process of working the foot into that um, so that it slowly gets used to it? What would be the best approach? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because I actually, I, I made that mistake. There was Born to Run, which is a famous, I don't know if you're familiar with that book, mm -hmm. uh, all about, you know, I think it was probably like 10 or 15 years ago, you know, profiled these these uh, amazing endurance athletes from, I think, Mex some tribes in Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, McDougal, I think is the name, if anyone wants, to, Chris, uh, I, might be, I might be mixing that up. Anyway, so I, I read that book, got excited, had some five finger, the Vibram sort of, right. you know, minimal shoe. And I went and like ran... Uh, just, I don't know, three or four miles, uh, which I, I had the capacity. So I was like, you know, I was fairly fit and I could run that, but I ran out in those shoes and I completely, you know, uh, I totally strained both calves and I couldn't walk for like two weeks. So I think y your point is very valid. Like you need to have the capacity in the foot to be able to spend more time, you know, barefoot in a more natural shoe. So you know, for me, I, I tend to spend most of my days uh, barefoot, but I have, I've been building that capacity for years and years. So I think, um, and most people just don't have that capacity in the foot. So I think the way I encourage or what I advise people to do is just on the next shoe that you purchase, try to go a little bit more on the spectrum towards natural. So it doesn't have to be a completely zero drop shoe. Uh, zero drop is just would be completely flat. So I think, um, you know, a higher heel drop might be 15 or 18 millimeters, maybe go down to 10 or eight, um, or, you you know, reduce the cushioning a little bit. I think the toe box thing is definitely something that is probably like the highest priority out of those, because when we do have those toes that, that, you know, are squished together, especially the big toe, if the big toe can't extend and push in that gait cycle it creates a lot of problems up the chain so really looking at um toe box and i always give this experiment to people like take your shoes right now and take out your sole and then stand on your stand on your sole when it's outside of your shoe for most people like their their toes are are you know splaying over the, the sole mm -hmm. so if we think about what's really happening inside of that shoe is is we're not really expressing the full um capacity of those joints and then the body you know like we know kind of adapts to what we give it and so we kind of lose the capacity there so yeah to answer that like start slowly just move along that spectrum is, is kind of what i what i advise people okay yeah there. so just ease it down don't shock the body don't shock the foot um yeah that's yeah. A approach and and i'm assuming you know just listen to the body as it adapts you know, and in regards to how fast to make those changes. Yeah, right. I think that brings up the idea of pain and pain being a, a, a like changing our perspective on pain because pain, in my view, it, it is like a beautiful teacher. I mean, pain sucks, right? right. Well, <laughs> like I don't wish on it, wish it on anybody, but like if we really think about the, the body is sending us like a, a pain signal. And so if we really start paying attention to that stuff, um, it can really help inform us and make sort of, you know, better decisions. I think our culture is, 
you know, I, I think Michael was kind of alluding to it with, with some of the nutrition stuff on, on your last segment, which, you know, it's like, we want the, the quick fix. We want the easy, convenient thing. We want to pop the, you know, give me the pain pill. I want to ignore pain. I don't want to feel it. I want to get rid of it. And, and obviously pain is like a, a wildly complex, yes. you know, psychosomatic thing that, that, uh, you know, mm. I, I'm not claiming to be an expert on, but I think high level, we can start to use pain as like an indicator of whether this thing I'm doing is good or bad. So like with foot stuff, you know, spend 10 or 20 minutes a day barefoot and, you know, is your pain um, going down? Is it going up? How often is it? I think that's the other thing is like getting a little bit more detailed around pain. Cause I think a lot of us are like, it hurts or it doesn't hurt, <laughs> but right. there, there's like a, there's like a, you know, being your own kind of scientist and saying, okay, it's a two out of 10 today. Oh, today it's a, it's a nine out of 10. Um, what did I do differently? Um, a lot of times it might just be like a little bit of overuse. Right. Um, and so you can start to sort of connect the dots there, but using pain as, as, as sort of your, um, you know, like an indicator to, you know, whether to move forward or, or to take a step back, I, I think is a good sort of, um, way to look at it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think, and again, that goes back to, you know, something that we've seen as, as a theme throughout the last two days is creating awareness, you know, that mm -hmm. body awareness, um, and really getting to know one's body, you know, and this, I think is what you were speaking about as well, you know, instead of lumping, it's painful, you know, in general, what type of pain, where, you know, when did it start? Was it after an action? Was it right whenever you woke up when it had been resting? You know, all different things that can play into it in order to create that awareness, because essentially we're all building our own toolbox, right? You know, because we all have different bodies and we all have different experiences and injuries and all the things. So we're, we're here to collectively come together and learn and it's each person's responsibility to kind of put it together on, for themselves, um, which is beautiful yeah. and also challenging. <laughs> yeah, right. hundred percent. There's, there's a responsibility there, right? That it's, it's, it's way easier to say, Hey, go to the physio, go to the PT, go to the doctor and, and tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. Right. You're, you're like offloading that work. And you know, that, that's like one of the biggest challenges I have as, as, as a coach and, helping people. It's like giving people the tools to have, like you have to have that awareness, but then you have to sort of really, you have to own it and you have to, you have to live it and you have to experiment. And it's, it's, it's arguably harder, I think in the short term, but man, like long term, it's an incredibly, it's an incredible gift because then, I mean, we all know our bodies way better than any expert does. And mm. so then we have this, this powerful way that we can walk through life and yeah, I mean, I'll still consult the orthopedic or a physio if, if something, you know, it comes up and I can't solve my problem, but you're just, you have so much more autonomy right. over our bodies. And so that, that is, is such a powerful way to empower people. Um, yeah. and, and that gets into our whole sort of, you know, healthcare system and how, and how it's kind of like outsourcing a lot of that work. And if we just sort of took care of ourselves and it's complicated, obviously there's, there's many social economic issues that are at play, mm -hmm. but yeah, that awareness comes first and the responsibility is, is huge. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So speaking mm -hmm. of like um, the awareness, I know whenever you and I spoke initially, you mentioned some, like some action, quick action things that can be done um, for those who are in boots all day or, you know, don't have the option or people who are looking to begin to incorporate foot health. What are some quick things that can be done um, to begin to help the foot? Yeah. So there's a lot here and I'll give you sort of, I think what are the big, big levers, like the biggest bang for your buck kind of exercises. And I think the first is, is, you know, everyone's got like access to like either a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball mm -hmm. and to start just doing, um, and I can demo this if it's helpful, but do, doing some plantar, what I call a plantar reset. So your plantar fascia on the bottom of your foot is this connective tissue. And it gets really like sort of bound up when we're wearing shoes or for most people, if you don't have good 
sort of toe function. So just spending one to two minutes on the bottom of your foot and rolling out your foot. So this is, I'm sure plenty of people on this call would be familiar of doing some kind of myofascial ball work. Yes, probably. Um, so that would be my sort of go-to. To me, I look at like doing like plantar work two to three minutes a day is kind of just like brushing my teeth or flossing my teeth for my, for my body, right? It's just like the general maintenance. And then um, a really cool tool is using, using balance, using balance to sort of recalibrate the lower body. So I have a couple balance beams that I have here. This is a really fun device from uh, the Foot Collective. It's a Soulmate. So it acts as like a foam roller. And then you can also just use it as like a dome shape. So you can stand on this. Oh, interesting. And so you can just, you know, you can do, I don't know, five, 10 minutes a day of just, and, and not even, you know, doing 10, you know, 10 sets of, or, you know, whatever, 10 sets of 10 reps and like having it be more of like play and just, mm -hmm. I'm going to spend 10 minutes on my balance um, dome or have a balance beam too. And, and at first you're going to suck and it's going to be hard, but it's amazing how it, 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 it kind of recalibrates the lower body. It connects the foot to the hip, mm -hmm. which we know about, you know, it's like the, you can't really have a foot conversation without having a hip conversation because the hip and the foot are, are so tied together. So I would say plan a reset with the ball, spending some time with balance. Um, and then there's these toe spacers that I'm actually currently wearing. Uh, I'll just pull them off, but they're, these are great, um, just silicone toe spacers and they go in between your toes to help sort of pull the toes apart and better align the foot. So you could wear these five or 10 minutes a day to start. I generally wear them three, four hours a day. Um, I train in them too. So I'm kind of realigning the toes and then I'm actually loading those tissues. So the body is kind of, um, sort getting of remembering. Yeah. Yeah. Getting that. Cause I think that's an important thing too, is like, there's the hardware of, you might have a really stiff, rigid foot or your toes might be in. And so doing stuff to like open up those joints, but then you have to also program the software which is like the movement so that the nervous system gets comfortable mm -hmm. um, in those ranges so i think yeah the balance is cool because it's play and it's not prescriptive exercise and i think most people on this call or listening to this don't need you know another 10 minutes of like you know five reps of whatever and, right. and i think you know having said that i think people probably need to like if, if you have a really flat foot or for me it's like I have a really stiff rigid sort of supinated foot I need to do stuff to kind of address that mm -hmm. but just doing the balance for 10 minutes um I've seen incredible sort of progress because my body is just kind of figuring it out mm -hmm. um and it's fun and and the, the foot collective community is great we have challenges and people post and so you can be seen and witness other people so it's it's kind of a cool community where it's it's really about the play aspect of which I think long term is so much more sticky, right? With these habits. Right. Um yeah. So those yeah. are a few. I think that's I just have one question about the ball. Is there a particular yeah. direction that you go? Are you going with muscle muscle fibers or are you going in a circle clockwise, counterclockwise? Yeah. So I generally do like one sweep sort of front to back. So I'll start like under the heel for anyone who's listening that like, it's just your calcaneus and your heel bone. So it's just like a fat pad under your heel. So there's not really much you can get into there. So anywhere in front of the heel and I'll go sort of front to back and then I'll go side to side and I'll spend time right under the sort of metatarsal. So the base of the toes and I'll go, I'll go side to side. And then I'll spend some time um, with my big toe kind of up, sort of getting that big toe extension. But I don't think there's really any, um, I think just hunting around for areas of, of tension, spending maybe 10 to 30 seconds in those areas and playing around with maybe loading it a little bit more by offloading your other foot and putting more pressure. But yeah. side to side, front to back, spending time uh, underneath the, the, the toes would be my sort of high level. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Do you have any questions for Nick? Feel free to drop them in the chat. We have a few minutes here before our next speaker. Um, and Nick, while they're thinking about questions, would you like to share your gift? Yeah. So I think you'll, you'll, someone will pop it in the, in the, in the chat, right? In the chat. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it's just my sort of, 
you know, my 12, 13 year sort of uh, path from, you know, being an athlete to, to being kind of sick and overweight as a, as like a corporate desk jockey to now reclaiming my health in, in, you know, I'm 43 now, um, you know, playing tennis, surfing at a high level. And it's sort of my cheat sheet of, of kind of mobility and, and sort of daily practices that I use. Um, so yeah, there's some hip stretches, there's some spine stuff just to sort of really formulate a, a daily movement practice in terms of like where people are um, at right now. Cause I think that's a important sort of distinction to make is like my mobility routine, I think can help anybody, but really like we talked about before, like if you have the awareness and you understand, okay, you're really missing like hip extension or you're, you know, like the specifics with where you're sort of limited mm -hmm. and then doing like a specific routine to kind of dial that sort of limitation in and sort of correct that. So it's like getting a little bit more specific with the routines. Um, and so you'll have sort of a, a, yeah, a bunch of exercises in a way to sort of like see where you're, you might be limited as far as your, um, your mobility goes. And so that you can layer on the strength uh, on top of that. So you have good movement. Perfect. Uh, I saw something about toe socks. Uh, yeah. Uh, thoughts on toe socks. Sure. Absolutely. Um, for sure. I think anything um, to, to promote the splay of, of toes, um, you know, it kind of depends on like how bad it is, but yeah, I, I think toe socks are great. I don't think it's going to, I think even with toe spreader spreaders, it's like, these are tools, right? So we have to use them. And so just, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I have my toe spacers on and I had them on for four day, for four hours today. Like I did my, I did my footwork. Right. But it's like, so you're, you're aligning. So a toe sock would, would, I would view a toe sock as being kind of like a toe spacer light. So you are promoting a little bit of that, of that sort of alignment, um, like better alignment, but you're, you have to kind of load the tissues in, in better alignment for that, um, you know, for those saves to be, you know, for those changes to be saved. It's like hitting save on the document, right? You know, but yeah. you have to kind of pattern the movement um, with, with the, the tool. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> Absolutely. Again, yeah not something again something else we've seen as a pattern here you know using the tool as a tool and not as a crutch so we still get to use it for support and then encourage the body to work the way that it was designed yeah and the body is this incredible i mean at least my belief it's an incredible self-healing self-organizing system right so a lot of times we just have to get out you know give it the right inputs and 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 take a longer time horizon. I think so. You know, it's so ingrained in our culture, like now or yesterday or next week. Right. I think you know, Michael like was talking about like your body is is a result of what you've been doing with it, and it's gonna it's not gonna change overnight. Um, right. and this stuff takes time, but it's it can be changed and you can improve, and it really helps everything up the up the chain in terms of performance and longevity. So yeah. I highly encourage people to to take the dive and spend some time on your, giving your feet some love. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you sh for sharing so much knowledge with us, wisdom, yeah. skill, all of that. Um, I've really enjoyed having you on and guys, if you haven't taken advantage of Nick's gift yet, go ahead and click that link so that you have access to it and feel free to reach out to Nick. If you have more questions or would like to work with him personally. And yeah. And thanks, Kate. I just want to give you a shout out. It's awesome what you're doing here. And and I really appreciate uh, yes. being on here. So thank you. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. And I look forward to talking with you soon. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Have a great day.